Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl from Elungo. Welcome to another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day. So if there's something that you guys want us to react to, let us know by dropping the link in the comment section below, and we'll do it for you. A big shout out to everyone that has subscribed to our channel so far. Thank you for liking, commenting, sharing, and everything that you guys are doing. We appreciate. And a big shout out to the person that suggested this. Today we're going to be reacting to the story of Mufti Meng. Amazing journey to Medina. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I don't think my life is as adventurous as my partners here. But mashallah, what I can tell you is I'm the eighth out of nine children. So I have got siblings, a brother who's younger, and uh, three sisters, and the other brothers are older than me. Uh, from a very young age, my father is a sheikh. Actually, he was the imam in the masjid in Zimbabwe, and he used to teach uh, children the deen. And I think from the age of three, I started learning the Quran. Uh, not because he sat me down and... and and taught me, but because there were children who used to come to the house and do hif, and I used to sit and I could read. And I recall they, they, there was once an, uh, a, a man who visited the house, and he heard me reading. So one day when we visited his house, he wanted to tell the others, this little boy, and I was only three, I think three and a half maybe, he says, this little boy can read. And uh, they told me, come sit down. They, and I recall exactly what there was in their lounge, and they, they seated me. And I was a very shy person, so I didn't read. And I remember he said, I'll give you one cent. Now, one cent in 1978 or 79 was actually uh, a lot of money. In Zimbabwe, it was stronger than the pound, stronger than double the British pound, I think. And to be honest with you, uh, I think we're laughing because Zimbabwean currency is canceled at the moment. We went into billions and trillions and nonillions and decillions. Uh, Sheikh Tawfiq knows all that. So what happened is, uh, for, I don't know whether it was the scent or whatever it was, but I, I read what I had known of by heart, and I recall now what the verses were. لَقَدْ نَصَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَوَاطِنَ كَثِيرَةٍ Those verses up to the end of that uh, little hizb. And I, I was just reading and continuing, and they told my dad, this little boy will be a hafid, you know. My father, low profile, he said, you know, just make dua, inshallah. But in the meantime, he used to work very hard on me. And I never, ever forget the effort my father made on me from a very young age. He was very patient, although uh, back in my days, corporal punishment was the norm, uh, you know. When I say corporal punishment, I mean to get whacked was a thing that was normal. You know, you expect it. My father used to call it charging the battery. Because whenever he, <laughs> whenever, he visited, whenever he left the country, he also attended many conferences. And, you know, I'd like to think I followed in his footsteps. So what happened is uh, every time he comes back, I would duck and dive because my hift would have become a bit weaker. Because I would, you know, uh, you have to have that fear of someone in your life, I think. Well, it, was, it worked with me. So that was my dad for me. And he would come back, and I knew that day I would get whacked. And the same day, he would take out of his bag a toy. Every time he went, no matter where he went, he brought me back something, not just me, but even the, my little brother, even if it meant of little value, but something was brought back. So we looked forward to him coming back, and we dreaded it at the same time. So alhamdulillah, at a very young age, I learned uh, the Quran. I memorized it. With uh, uh, school, uh, you know, we come from a very, uh, perhaps maybe, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be embarrassed to say quite a low income background in, in that sense. You know, a long time ago, a lot of our fathers perhaps or grandfathers couldn't afford shoes. That's not the reason why I wear slippers today. But anyway, <laughs> uh, uh, subhanallah, what happened as a result is, I started learning the Arabic language and there was a, the, the Arabic uh, embassies that opened up in Zimbabwe as we became independent in 1980. Uh, they collected their children and gathered in one embassy and started their lessons for the children of the Arabic embassies and I had the good fortune of joining them. So from that young age, mashallah, learning the Arabic language and you know, picking up on so many things together with secular education in the mornings with the government schools. And uh, when I got to the point of getting to high school, 
uh, I, I was good. I was actually of the good fortune of being accepted at a college which was considered one of the best in the country. To this day, it is considered one of the best in Zimbabwe, but it was a proper, pure Christian college uh, that we had. Uh, that was the best option we had. And mashallah, I got into there and I did quite well. And when I completed, mashallah, I was looking forward to become uh, an ophthalmologist. And I had actually applied to a certain uh, academy in the United States. Before I had got the uh, you know, acceptance from them, one day in the post I got an acceptance letter from Medina Munawara. Now I had already studied a lot of the deen and a lot of the books with my father and as we were growing up he used to teach and I used to attend the lessons with him and I used to sit with him and he runs massive institutions which today mashallah we are trying to run by the will of Allah in Zimbabwe. And what has happened is, or what did happen at the time is when this acceptance from Medina came through I told my father, I said you know what, I don't remember applying. He said, well, two years ago, we had a few mashayikh who visited us, and I just gave your name, and, you know, we agreed that let this, let's see what happens in, by the time the application is approved. Here it is approved, and my dad says, you know what? We're, we're, uh, the, the ticket is there. Everything is there. Why don't you just go? It's a city of Rasulullah Sallallahu See how you feel. And, you know, if you really feel you can't manage and you won't be able to, then you can come back and continue with whatever you wanted to. And if, if, if you go according to what my plan is, go and complete there, and then you can go and do your medicine after that, inshallah, you know? So I looked at him and I said, okay, not a problem. Let's see, Medina. It was exciting to travel by air and to go to Medina Munawara. Uh, this was in 1991, just after that war had uh, erupted and so on. So I pitched up Medina Munawara, mashallah, and I didn't look back. By the will of Allah today, mashallah, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has... Uh, taken us places and we ask Allah to keep us as humble as possible and accept from us uh, whatever little he has used us to, to do in the field. One thing I want to make mention before I close, Sheikh. I was a youngster as I grew up at the age of about 14 to about maybe 18. I had a temper. I actually used to get angry at very small things. I used to get upset so much so that people my, in my own house, you know, they, they didn't really mess with me, so to speak. Because they knew this, this guy is capable of breaking a, a window or perhaps, you know, you look at me today, subhanAllah, I'll fix that window for you, inshallah. But uh, I had a temper. And I recall that when I arrived in Medina Munawara, the way I was treated the day I arrived, you know, people look at it as negative. These guys, ta'al bukra, which means come tomorrow. And everything is there. You can see your name on the list. He says, la, ta'al bukra, you know. And you, you, you know. But you cannot do anything about it. Nothing. Nothing. You just have to digest. For me, that was training. That was elimination of your temper. It was like him telling me, come back when you're cool. And I'll still tell you, ta'al shahr al-jai. And you come back next month, you know. At least he's saying tomorrow, you know, subhanallah. So to be honest with you, I worked so hard because I complained to one of the mashayikh in Medina Munawwara saying, what's the problem? The guy is reading the newspaper, he's drinking tea, he just doesn't want to do what is so simple, you know, what's all this? He says, calm down, you need to know there's adad, there's taqalid, there's things, people are born and brought up in that system. You need to like the system or you're not going to be able to survive here. So I thought to myself, I said, now if I phone my dad and tell him I need to get back home because of this, subhanallah, it's so, such a weak excuse. And then there was an ustad, and I even recall his name, he, as Sheikh Awad al-Shihri, I don't know if you, some of you might have heard that name, Medina Munawwara. He was teaching us al-Bukhari, and there was a hadith where he, he re re reiterated the fadail al-Madina, the virtue of Medina, and he says, Inna al-Madina tayyibatun tanfil khabath kama yanfil kiru khabath al-hadith. Medina is pure, and it, it flicks away, it chases away, it basically kicks out the dirt, just like the blacksmith or the... the, the Yes, the blacksmith would blow into the, the ore and, and kick out, the, you know, the dirt. And I, that time I felt, you know, maybe if I want to leave this place, I might be a dirty person. That's why Medina is actually kicking me out. So I'm going to prove Medina wrong and I'm going to stay here. <laughs> Subhanallah. And I was a youngster growing up. And believe me, I worked on my temper to the degree that today, by the will of Allah, I won't be wrong if I say it's quite hard to get me angry. It's quite hard to get me angry. Uh, you, can, you need to work. Very, please don't try your luck. But 
What I mean is you say what you want, do what you want. I just sit, you know, and I just look at you. And things might be going at the back of my mind, but I know I need to be in control of what I'm, what's going on because you need to be calm and cool to have good health and to be a person who's a, a Muslim and live as a Muslim and so on. La taqdab, la taqdab, la taqdab. Don't get angry, don't get angry. I calmed it down so much that today, subhanAllah, a lot of what I do, I feel that if I had a temper, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have achieved. May Allah grant us goodness. Jazakumullah khair. Ameen. Barakallahu feek. I really love the video and I don't think I have much to say. <coughs> I mean, sometimes in life, there's things that we want to be or things that we want achieved. But then God has a different plan for us. So even if we don't get to do what we want to do, let's just go. Sometimes you have to go with the flow as long as it's not harming anyone. Sometimes go with the flow and see what God has planned for you. Otherwise, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in my next reaction video.